The massive commercial real estate disaster is not over just yet, and get ready for bank failures, more loan defaults, and also multi-millions of dollars of money down the gutter. Now, this whole situation isn't over just yet. If you look at some of America's finest cities, our real estate prices are dropping like a rock. Now, remember, not every single city in the U.S. is dropping, specifically some of the Midwestern cities, cities that are preferably cheaper and are just not as chaotic and with less population and more walkable are tending to do really, really well. Seems like a lot of Americans are kind of sick and tired of the big city life with the big city crime and craziness to it. And they're opting in for something a lot calmer, quieter, more suburban-like, and a little bit more walkable. That's what everyone's going for. And if you look at South Florida, it's also very popular. If you want the big city life, Miami, Tampa, Orlando, by far one of the most popping and it's a rocket ship city. It just keeps going up. Everyone is moving there tech bros and also finance individuals. Even Goldman is moving the office down to Miami. It is crazy over there. And for the first time, Miami is getting a lot of jobs besides the hospitality industry. Now, check this out. So you do have a CRE recession. This is going to be the commercial real estate sector. It looks very, very likely. And it'll be years before we really understand the damage the pandemic did to the world. Now, here's the thing. If you go to a lot of other cities around the world, commercial real estate it's doing really, really bad. Even like very popular locations like Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Singapore, their commercial real estate sector is still very strong, but it's actually really weak compared to pre-pandemic. And we're at post-pandemic for a couple years already. And commercial real estate will never be the same. With the rise of remote work and gig work, nobody is really moving to the downtown areas. In fact, a lot of the more suburban cities and a lot of other cities around the world are getting more popularity as young people just want to move away from the big city life. And this is just a really bad thing for commercial real estate. But here's the thing. Commercial real estate around the world isn't doing as poorly as here in America. Sure, commercial real estate, for example, in Singapore is doing pretty bad, but the vacancies are still 5 to 10%. Here in the U.S., it's an average of 20 to 25%. So it's two to three times higher than other cities. And certain cities like San Francisco, where there's a huge cluster of commercial office buildings, it's like 40 to 70% vacancies for certain buildings. I mean, it's so bad to the point that Swift defaulted on a $62 million loan to a historical San Francisco office building. This is a massive building, guys. The Sharon building has sat empty for five years, and it's not just them. Uber is also pretty dumb with commercial real estate, too. They fully renovated a commercial real estate building in San Francisco for, you know, it's like a quarter million square feet. It's massive, and they didn't use it a single time, okay? They thought they are going to use it after the pandemic, but they start noticing that they save more money by just putting workers online. Yeah, nobody is going back to the offices. So Uber is having trouble subleasing their quarter million square feet unit out. And to this day, it's been several months, they can't find a single person to sublease that space. I don't think any big corporation is crazy enough to rent in a big city right now. If you check out this, you know, it's a massive CEO here, you know, real estate guy is saying that this whole commercial real estate recession looks very likely and he's going to be very worried as years to come. Guys, if you guys think the banking crisis is over, think again. Okay, Banks have a lot of these commercial real estate loans. When we talk about real estate, we're not talking about a few months. We're talking about a few decades sometimes, and sometimes several years down the line. And as a lot of these small regional banks overfinance and over leverage themselves during the pandemic because of zero interest rates, they are now really, really screwed. In fact, some people are saying that over 300 banks are ticking time bombs simply because of the amount of commercial real estate loans that they've given out. And a lot of these loans are now totally worthless with a lot of these guys who are in the industry, in the commercial space, the office space, they start saying, oh wow, look at all of these buildings that we built and the debt itself is worth two to three times higher than the building that we own. Let's just give the building back to the bank and the banks don't want the building. In fact, as I'm speaking, every single week, we're getting one massive building or one massive skyscraper that is getting sent back to the bank. This is a record amount of commercial skyscraper defaults. This is something we haven't seen yet since 2008, but now we're seeing this. Now, it hasn't affected residential as much, but give us some time and even very hot areas like Miami will start feeling the massive pressures of commercial real estate failures.
Now, this is very scary. And there's also a lot of people saying that if we could find a way to turn these buildings to residential, this could also cause a massive inflow of units into the market. And we also could be seeing some cities giving you know, subsidies to developers to convert these offices to condominiums, which, like I said before, will probably drag on the price of a ton of these condos. I mean, some of these Miami condos look absolutely fantastic. You know, views of the sea and the whole city. You know, a lot of these Miami condos, they look really nice. Prices are still rising, but we get a massive commercial real estate failure and you also drag down a couple hundred banks. Even hot Miami prices will not be sustainable. Now, Goldman Sachs has also write down the value of commercial real estate loans, equity. This is bad because Goldman is by far you know, the leader here. When Goldman writes down a lot of the value here, it really shows you that commercial real estate is kind of completely screwed. Commercial real estate has always been some of the decent investment, but now with Goldman writing down the commercial office loans, it shows you that not even they are confident. Now, the CEO of Goldman, the guy right here, has even said that, hey, we're going to get hit pretty hard by the commercial real estate sector. We're not joking around. So at first, I always, always thought, okay, this is probably like a regional bank thing. I know that regional banks are going to hit very, very hard if commercial real estate go under, which is already going under, okay? Like buildings are getting defaulted every single day. There's so many of these companies not paying rent. And then you also have meme lords like Elon Musk not paying rent for laughs and giggles because he doesn't like San Francisco. So it's just a big headache, okay? Real estate is not great. You're seeing Goldman's pretty frustrated as well. And it's going to hit Goldman very, very hard. If Goldman's going to hit this hard, look at the small regional banks. It's even worse. Now, Goldman Sachs has told CNBC that the firm will be taking a lot of charges on the real estate assets. And they'll be taking some big direct hits. Now, a lot of the banking stocks right now are not going up. And for good reason, because commercial real estate is so bad. And this is like a $20.7 trillion industry, guys. This is not like some multi-billion dollar industry. This is $20 trillion. And the valuation right now is probably $15 trillion compared to 2021. So this is a multi-trillion dollar industry. And no one's joking around now. Okay, This is bigger than the residential bubble pop. I mean, this is might even be worse than 2008 considering how bubbly a lot of things are getting. And we could be seeing a very, very big bubble pop. Now, a lot of people are also saying that regional banks should be drawing more scrutiny because they truly over leveraged themselves during 0% interest rates. It was a frenzy. I mean, during 0% rates, I remember if you weren't taking out loans and buying two to three houses, people looked at you funny. Okay, People are like, what are you doing? Why are you not taking out a bunch of loans to buy houses? Some people are pretty smart. They don't really care about that outside noise. They took out a loan. They even put down a big down payment and took out a mortgage, reasonable. You know, it's like a 2.8% 15-year mortgage. They bought a house and settled down. Some people literally refinanced their homes, like refinanced their two houses and then bought like 10 homes. And now they're completely screwed because rents are going down, houses are going down, and it's just painful. This is why we have a 23, I think, what is it? Like a 24-month straight increase in housing foreclosures. It is nuts. Now, before guys leave... Make sure to check out the private Discord server, Patreon link below for some amazing trades. We trade live on a daily basis every single day. What do you guys think? It's $10. Feel free to you know DM me if you have any questions. And just live options, stock trades, crypto info, and much, much more. Check us out.